So anyway, so yeah, we're at Jenny Land Thomas. So I won't ask you the famous question of who you are, but who are you? <laughs> I'm Jenny Lamb. <laughs> yep. And I'm the creative lead on the MSX design team. And what does that mean? Well, MSX actually stands for Microsoft User Experience, but we're the design team that is on the Windows user experience team. We work on um, the user experience for the shell, uh, Internet Explorer, Windows Media Player, Digital Image Gallery, and um, MSN Music Service. Now you're way underplaying your role here. <laughs> That's right. Let me get mean? let me get my tripod set up here. Let me let me close the door. <laughs> okay. Um, well, as I walk around Microsoft, it, you know, there's some some people who I keep hearing their name. Yeah. And you're one of them. Jenny Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> and your name comes up with. Uh, uh, like you did all the PDC graphics, right? Yeah. And and experiences, right? Yeah. Um, and you do a lot of the visual stuff we see in Windows, right? right. Can right. you tell us a little bit about what your job is like? Yeah, right? it's um, it's kind of hard to explain. It's um, it's actually kind you of a new right discipline. Here. It's that bright screen is oh. making it dark. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's kind of a new discipline at Microsoft. Um, I call it branding user experience, and it's not. It's not just about the brand touch points you see in marketing, but having that come from that sort of perception of what the product is all about and that gut feeling that someone has about a product, yeah. that it comes from the product and it resonates through various things like packaging and internal communications like our posters and, um, and our events like PDC, which is a huge event for us. Yeah. Um, that really like exposes the power of the PC and what that, you know, what the community can contribute to our ecosystem. Um, and then, you know, also things like uh, business cards and, you know, collateral and uh, marketing materials and website design, things like that. So it's a, it, I touched so many things, and PDC was sort of a moonlighting job for me because I did the, the packaging for the goods in, in 03. And, they asked me in 05 to sort of take on the overall creative direction for PDC, and I said, sure, heck right. yeah, that's a great event, I'll do it. Um, and so I did the packaging, which is over there, um, as well as the, um, I sort of cherry-picked the, the stuff that I really cared about a lot, like the video that yeah. opened up the show. Oh, that was really cool. And sort of the graphics behind the stage, just sort of undulating ribbons, things, yeah. and, and some of the sort of the general feeling of the PDC. Right. Now, when we get Windows Vista, what, what are we going to see that's yours, that you did? Um, so I own, well, I own, I hate saying that word, but I drive uh, the desktop wallpaper and okay. screensavers. I'm working on So you're the one responsible for <laughs> <laughs> the green grass I see all yeah, over campus. but see, that was kind of a trick because that was... We don't want. We want to save our thunder for for launch, and so we wanted to come out with something that really showed off the glass really well. So when you run, you know, the glass over the blades, you can actually see the refraction, and you can get a sense of dimension and depth, and that it has its higher fidelity. But it it wasn't a nod or wink to anything in the future. It's sort of a placeholder, but a nicer version. But yeah, I'm responsible for grass, even the the bales of hay in Alpha. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. It's funny because the, the Niners, the channel Niners, and all the bloggers use that as their sort of image to represent Vista. And oh, there's whole industries. I know. <laughs> there's whole industries of people out there, like at Neowin, who, who yeah. wish they could sit behind you <laughs> and get... That's why I have certain things closed right now. <laughs> but um, I also started the... the the initial creative development of the icons, yeah. so the 3D icons, all this stuff. I mean, it, it, there are a lot of little touch points, but it's not just me. It's a, you know, this world-class group of designers here who work on the hard problems, like the interaction design of them, and uh, and so we work really closely together with, um, together, and then also with usability and you know ethnography, and so. Uh, now I work with a lot of geeks, both here at Microsoft and outside in the real world. <laughs> and generally the stereotypes stick true, right? They're, they're really great at writing algorithms, or really great at understanding how the machine works and how to make it do something, but they're not really good at emotion. They're not the kinds of people you would see, uh, oh, what a Martha Stewart apprentice. Uh, <laughs> 
you know, uh, yeah. ca casting call, right? <laughs> it's, it's, you know, engineers and developers and geeks, um, you know, everything they do is, is measurable. And emotion is a really hard thing to measure. And we've tried to, we, we've found tricks here and there to try to get a feeling for where we're going with it. Um, like we just did this study in LA where people had dials in an audience, and so we ran through a demo of our, it was purely around visuals. And they would dial up or they would dial down based on how they were feeling about the product. Okay. And so you sort of get this gut reaction without having to deal with words that are pretty slippery. So, um, so that, that's, an, that's an interesting way, and, and Joey, who's on our um, the MSX user research team, he's, he's been looking at desirability sort of exercises about what's desirable and why, and the why is so important. So, yeah, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough thing, and it's so subjective, and sometimes you just want to go with your gut feeling with, like, this is the right thing to do for Microsoft. Let's not measure it, and let's, yeah. let's not, like, analyze the heck out of it. Let's just do what we feel is right and what's where the industry is headed, and sometimes we get compared to Apple. A lot of times we get compared to Apple. <laughs> I compare <laughs> Microsoft to Apple. Because, I, you, know. you know, it's hard because it's, um, it's there are so few competitors to compare us against, and um, and they are great. They, I mean, they have a great design philosophy, but those design philosophies are universal. You know, clear space, hierarchy, <laughs> you know, good use of typography, things like that. And so... Um, those types of things we're adopting, we're paying really great attention to, um, just because it's the right thing to do, not because we're trying to copy Apple. Yeah. So. Well, it, you can tell the UI has gone in a different direction than Apple has, anyway. So. You think so? Some people say. I think so. I, I think it's. Uh, yeah, there's similarities here and there, but mm -hmm. there's going to be. You know, it's like a car is going to have a steering wheel, right? Right. And it, right. It's going to have doors. four tires. Yeah. And, well, most cars have four <laughs> tires. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I I see things that they do that we've done, you know, in the past, and yeah. and vice versa, right? Uh, but they're not doing transparent windows. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not doing some of the folder lookup that we're doing. You know. Um, it's kind of cool because um, a lot of, like, all of our design decisions around transparency and these things that seem just like eye candy actually have um, some practical value to them. Yeah. So, Cheer does this, I don't know if you've seen his presentation on Arrow. Um, he just did one to sort of the community just recently. Yeah. And, um, and there's, like, we have this list of all the practical reasons why we went with, you know, transparency and why we went with black for the sidebar and for the taskbar. And, they're, um, and they make sense. So we always, like, carry this mantra around. It's a smart, neat, beautiful, because it's that sort of balance of, yeah. of both. How do you convince Microsoft, you know, how do you convince Microsoft to get into this new world? Could it, I'll be honest, my, my branding of Apple and Microsoft go back to the 1980s. And go back to maybe even the late seventies, right? When I first saw the Apple II, and it had a, a beautiful industrial design, and no other computer manufacturer back in the late seventies was paying attention to design like yeah. that. And some of some of that brand that I have goes back that far with Apple and with Microsoft. And Microsoft, you, you know, I remember uh, uh, comparing a Mac II back in the in the late eighties mm -hmm. to. Um, you know, a Windows 2 machine, which was pretty ugly in comparison. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you actually, you can actually go to our company store and see some of these, you know, yeah, computers. We have posters down that red hallway of the history of computing. Yeah. Yeah, and it gets back, um, it's pretty gnarly. So how, how do you convince Microsoft to go dramatically far, farther than it, it has with the user interface and, and user emotion and experience? Well, I think, I don't think there was much convincing that we had to do. I think we realized that when other competitors started copying us, that we were, you know, we were easily commoditized. And that's what can help us pre prevent commoditization is distinctiveness and emotional connection and creating a brand um, that people can see and say, I know that's Windows, I can trust it, and, um, and it's not a ripoff. And so I think it's a business um, sort of wake up call <laughs> yeah. when we saw those cloners go out. Um, so uh, I don't think there was much convincing. Uh, there's some really smart people over in the, in the business group who care about branding a lot and who really know it really well. And, yeah. um, and I think the task for us is really how to communicate through the product 
the value of Windows. And people, this is a huge opportunity and it's very unique where the business is doing really healthy and we're um, very successful, but there's very little emotional connection and desirability and people don't understand why they have Windows or, you know, what the value it brings to them. Right. So, um, you know, tactics like visuals that do a lot of sound, packaging, um, even the way we talk to our customers and the tone and manner and behavior, all of that adds up to this overall impression. Um, and so, yeah, to answer your question, it's just, it, it, it's something we need to do or we're just going to... Uh, well, this is, a, this is part of a bigger trend in society right now, right? Yeah. The video games we're playing with are getting much more sophisticated. I mean, uh, you compare, um, you know, Flight Simulator of 20 years ago to Flight Simulator of today, and it's not even in... Oh, really? You, you wouldn't even recognize, you wouldn't even recognize the, the product, right? Yeah. Um, you go and uh, you go to retail. The retail is now an experience. You, oh, know, totally. you go to the Sony Metreon in San Francisco, and they have video games on the floors, yeah. and they have, um, you know, they've really spent time thinking about the materials used in the place, and Absolutely. you know, the, the whole experience you have when you walk in. Well, Starbucks yeah. is a great example of a cup of coffee, and sort of reinventing what that is into an experience where you go and you listen to music, and you, you know. You, uh, your, you surf the internet on your laptop there, or the potato peeler with OXO. You know, now, like we just lost about 80% of the geeks. <laughs> oh, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> no, it's, 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 but this is how I know I'm they sure think. I'm sure geeks go to Starbucks. <laughs> no, but they, when you start talking about soft and touchy and, and, yeah. and emotional things, thing, they don't think that way. In fact, I, I interviewed the Sparkle team, right? Yeah. And I had a geek and a designer and and the geek admitted I can't even see color I can't see <laughs> you know I can't see when uh, Manuel changes the UI I, I just don't I'm not sensitive to that I I don't live in that world I live in a command line that's black and white and has characters in it and it's interesting that the, uh, these two worlds are intersecting now yeah. uh, across the company and across the industry. Well, know? I think that's interesting because when we first were developing our creative for PDC, we were trying to get to the mind of the developer. So I'm not very technical and I'm not a developer. But um, but I work with a lot of them, you know, implementing our designs. We, we struggle sometimes with that communication. But, um, but I find that developers are actually pretty creative folks. Like, they they see things, things differently and, um, and I don't know how to explain it but like we had that idea of the string theory <laughs> about all these ideas merging together to create something bigger and um, so I think developers and geeks are creative but they're just creative in a different way and you, know, you need to find that, that language to sort of talk to them with. Yeah. Why, why a circular start button? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's it's not just circular. It bumps up above the taskbar, yeah. so it's um, well. And it actually is a square uh, pressure area because uh, if you the go, focus if you, yeah, yeah, the focus is rectangular. Yeah. So if you go, if you take your mouse all the way to the corner and push down, you still get the menu. So it's not just <laughs> what you see, you know, which is really great because that's usability. Right. right? You uh, you so just many throw people. Your mouse down if, there. if you made it the target area, just that circle, it would really piss me right, off. Right. <laughs> you have a fascination with the start button. You know, I've like, watched a couple well, of videos. Have, and I have a fascination with little things like that because yeah. it's uh, it, it just it fascinates me where the UI comes from and, and how it evolves. Well, the answer to that is that it's simple. I mean, that was one of that's another one of our sort of design charters was to simplify the UI. So getting rid of that text to the right of start. I mean, um, people recognize Windows for like two things. I mean, if you just from a you know a pedestrian sort of conversation, it's the start button in the lower left and the clock in the lower right. That's how they know it's Windows. And so we knew that people really like are very familiar with that element to make it more like a jewel-like piece and to simplify it um, was sort of our what made our design you know decisions. Yeah. Um, also, I don't know if you know, but like we localize that text oh, really? start in XP, and so it looks pretty crummy because uh, clear type isn't turned on by default, and the kerning, just the letter spacing, is is kind of off. It's not perfect, and so it's like let's get rid of that text. People know it's start, and yeah. let's just make it this beautiful gem.
Interesting. How, how many iterations does do, do you go through to design oh something God. like that? We went through. I want to say like over two hundred plus. It was it was like, it was three designers. Um, our design Lee, Mark Ligamari, and Greg Melander, and myself. And we partied on that thing, like in Photoshop, just throwing our, our files back and forth to each other. We call it Photoshop Tennis. Um, and I, I got, I, it, there must be like 200, at least 200 versions of that. And we were still tinkering away at it. Just last week, we were trying to fix the colors on it to make sure that the hover was was noticeable enough and the depressed state was strong enough. How do you know you nailed it? Um, how, how do you know when to stop, maybe? <laughs> uh, they run out, run out of time. <laughs> and then um, you, um, you, you know, put it in a beta, and you get yeah. feedback from a lot of people, you know, from the, through the top programs or, you know, just regular public. So that's, and, you know, you test it in the labs. What, what other things in Windows Vista are you going to show off at design conferences or show off to other designers who come and visit you or that you meet, you know? Well, I can't, what are talk, you about about a lot of, I can't <laughs> talk about a lot of it because okay. we're trying to save it for launch. All right. Um, so there's some good stuff coming then. There's some good so stuff. So we haven't seen the final UI. That's a, a, a big Well, significant. no, no. We, the, the UI is, is pretty much there. Like, I think what's going to really make it um, the sort of icing on the cake is is the fit and finish, sort of the polish around everything, and I mean that's personally been my you know, pet peeve is the when you drag a window, the things don't feel really smooth and um, and really crafted, and I think that's um, that's the, sort of the last part of our effort okay. is nailing that. What are you proudest of that you can talk about? <laughs> um, gosh. Maybe in beta too. Yeah, well, it's, it's hard just... to say because our the brand philosophy that I've you know really been put forth through Windows Vista is that branding isn't about putting the logo everywhere, you know, just like throwing little stickers everywhere, but it's this sort of end-to-end -end experience so that when you go to the retail environment and you see PCs without the 404 error screen <laughs> and they're actually on and they're, and they're running, you know, a screensaver or something really great and informative and attractive. And then you, you actually experience the product from turning it on and hearing the beautiful startup sound to, you know, organizing and visualizing your, your files, then that it, someone gets it, that it all was designed, to, you know, the sort of um, a thoughtful, sort of a thoughtful manner. So I think that's what I'm most proud of. And it's hard to, you know, it's hard to pinpoint because the philosophy has been this holistic experience. So yeah. Tell me about folder icons. <laughs> Why they went vertical? <laughs> well, tell me about them. Just how how are they cha changed from uh, Windows XP? And tell it's me a little bit about the design an interesting process that you guys went through for folder icons. We started the process, in, I guess it was four years ago. Um, we knew that icons in XP were fairly cartoony. They were low res. So if you're running high resolution monitor, like your your icons would look really jagged. So we decided we made um, a stand on increasing the, um, the resolution on these. So they go up to 256 by 256 pixels, which is, seems jumbo and huge, but when you know, you're looking at them on a high-res monitor, they look nice and crisp. Yep. So the folder icon was actually one of the first icons we explored um, with an agency called Icon Factory. Great guys in North Carolina. And, um, and we talked about making this unique for Vista because it was, you know, just this new look and feel. So we put the, the folder on its side and made it vertical and so that you could see some of the documents in it. And the virtual folders took on this sort of blue, clear um, shape so you could see through. So they looked like glass folders and you could see through them. Mm -hmm. So. And they have shadows on them now. Yeah. yeah, and they have a perspective. There's like a, there's a little formula for things that objects that sort of stand up on a desk yeah. would be at a, an, a certain isometric perspective with a drop shadow. Um, and then um, things that are flat, like a piece of paper, would be at a bird's eye perspective. So the camera would be looking down um, and you'd, you'd get you know, a nice mass of, of pixels. Yeah. Uh, now, it, what was the delivery for the folder? For instance, how, how many? What was it? A bitmap? Was it a ping file? Oh, what, what so was, uh, originally we had this, you know, 
we thought we could do everything in vector, you know, because you could scale them however big you wanted. But you lose a lot of you lose a lot of sort of fidelity and finesse and like like the drop shadow touches and like really fine cornered edges um, that you can't get in vector that you could get in Photoshop. So they, originally they were delivered to us in vector and you tweak around with them. We'd actually throw them into Photoshop and add nice little touches here and then they get exported at, um, as an ICO file, ICO file and different sizes so we author them at a big size and then a mid size and then that 16 by 16 which is like a pain in the butt to make because it's 16 pixels and there's only so much you can do yeah. so you really have to sit there and like poke at them and, and make them as close as to the original beautiful 256 version. Wow. And so you use Adobe Photoshop? What I other use, tools do you use? Um, I use Photoshop, I use Illustrator, I use um, PowerPoint, <laughs> a lot of PowerPoint these days because of presentations, evangelizing our, our design philosophy to other teams. Yeah. Um, I use InDesign um, a lot for uh, print collateral. So okay. I still love print and I do it every chance I can. Um, but, um, so this what, I, what else do I use? I dabble a little bit in Flash. Um, okay. And I've uh, played around with Sparkle and um, just ramping up on some of and Visual Basics sometimes we use that. Yeah, for prototyping kind of yeah. things. Yeah. Are, do you think Sparkle's going to change how you do the next OS after, oh, think, after Windows Vista? I think definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Interesting. Um, you said, uh, so the icon, the folder icon was what, three files then you delivered into the OS, right? Yeah, well there's... Um, three dot ICO files. Right, right, and they're huge now. They're like over, a, well some of them can be about a half a meg. Really? Yeah, because they have this big high resolution um, ICO file in there. So they okay. get, they can load up this, I mean the system has like I think over 800 new icons right now for beta 2. Okay. Which is a huge effort because each one of those icons were hand done. Um, now, how do you check your stuff into the source code that gets that builds uh, Windows Vista here? We and, and yeah. how often? Like, I get builds every once in a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing the daily build thing, yeah. but every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I know. So when I'm watching people with daily builds, their the UI changes almost every day lately. Yeah. Well, yeah. especially lately because we've been locking down on beta two. Okay. Um, we work really closely with developers, and we've got a couple of designers on this team. Uh, Harold Gomez is one of them who owns the theme file that um, has an enlistment, like he can actually check things in to the UX build, the UX user experience build. And so we work really closely with the developers, and, and, and then they check it in, and then we see a daily UX build, and eventually that UX build gets up to main okay. and merges, and then you'll see new visuals. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there anything uh, that you'd like people to check out when they get like beta two or get the final version of Windows Vista? Um, there were, let's see, there's one thing I was going to say, but it got yanked at the last minute uh, uh, because of performance issues. Um, oh, that's interesting. So you, you even as a designer, you have to worry about uh, oh, how. Oh, totally. <laughs> so I do some of the animations. Um, there's there was an animation that's supposed to happen when you launch an explorer. And it's really subtle, it's in the preview pane, um, but it was just a nice little touch um, to have something sort of alive and moving. Um, so look out for that in RC0. Okay. Um, the one thing you'll notice is that from beta 1 we had all these random colors per explorer and we unified them to this blue-green vista color. So okay. you don't have this sort of rainbow of jewel tone colors. Right. Um, that's sort of a brand nod. And you'll see a new desktop wallpaper. Okay. <laughs> um, that speaks to our, our the launch of our name. So we revealed our name in August, yep. and uh, and this new wallpaper reflects it. It's not the final one. Okay. Um, you'll see a new login yep. background, which is uh, beautiful, and it's also sort of branded, but it doesn't have our big honkin' logo there. <laughs> yeah. Um, How do you get the photography for the desktop? So I've been on um, the past couple of months on a couple of really brutal photo shoots <laughs> where we had to wake up 
at 2.30 in the morning and hike out to some mountaintop and with a professional photographer. Are you allowed to say where you were shooting? Sure. Yeah, we shot in Santa Barbara okay. um, because of its very diverse terrain. There's parts of it that looks like the Mediterranean, there's parts that look like the desert. Um, a lot of the shots came back really brown because we went in October where things are starting to dry up. Um, but we're, we're doing more photo shoots and we just did one in New York um, to get sort of the urban feel. And these are sort of not, these are just sample desktop images yeah. that go in the box. We'll have more of those this time. Um, and. Uh, why don't you just take submissions from average photographers? You know, you sent me an email on that, and we're working on it. Okay. Yeah, um, and I think that the, there's going to be a contest that comes out later this year. Really? Where we're taking is that really it. happening? It really is <laughs> happening. <laughs> you started See? something really big. I, I hope that's going to be fun. And know, it's, it, I mean, I get like two emails a week at minimum from from folks who want who are great photographers and they want to show off their pictures and they just want to give them to us and yeah. they are truly great images especially for the desktop because uh, it's something to take a picture um, you know just for picture's sake but for a lit box you know where you put icons on top of is another thing and I, there's something about people who are in technology who understand that that they know what makes a really great desktop image. And I'm surprised by the quality. It's just, you know, at first I was like, this is a bad idea. <laughs> it's kind of like saying, well, let's just get the people we know to be the models, you know, when, but, you know, that's not their talent. But some of the submissions are pretty good. And we'll what, what kind of spec do you need to, to actually make it into the product? How, how many pixels across and how many pixels that? Well, we, we prefer different sizes because, you um, know, you have to accommodate for tablet, for portrait, and for yep. widescreen. Mm -hmm. So we prefer an image that can be cropped. Um, high resolution is possible, um, 16 by 12, okay. is sort of the, um, what people submit. And then we try to find a way to crop it. Um, and then things to be aware of is things like you know icons that sit on top of it, and that the image may stretch. You know if yep. if we uh, don't get the cropping in right. Well, and Bill Hill has one of those uh, IBM monitors that's thirty five hundred pixels across. Yes. <laughs> so do you, do you have any images that are going to make him like go, go? My God, they put a really good Not photo. Not yet. In there. Not yet. But this yeah. would be it. Would be a great time to get some in. I think that's like a ten megapixel image, right? That, yeah, I'm sure that's thirty five hundred pixels. Gotta do something by, for your time. Or something. Yeah. It's a it's a huge image <laughs> yeah. size. My little uh, Nikon only fills like <laughs> two thirds of his screen. Yeah. Uh, um, what what other where do you get your in, influence from your creativity from? Where where do you go to, you know, come up with a creative idea or? Well, I <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I mean, I have design heroes that I um, love you know to sort of follow and watch. And Who are they? Um, Bruce Mao is one of uh, one of my idols. <laughs> he's uh, he's from Toronto, and he's um, I wouldn't really necessarily call him a designer. He's more he's more of a philosopher. And um, what's his name again? Bruce Mao. Okay. M A U. Okay. Um, so check out his stuff. He just had an exhibit in Vancouver called Massive Change, and it was about how design can really impact the world. And I mean saving lives and things like that, I mean, wow. design of, of, um, of, you know, um, of environmental systems or design of products that can make people, you know. Well, look at our highways and how they've changed in 30 years. We have the bot dot, bots dots that are on the lane markers. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, that's design, That right? is design, right. Yeah. Urban planning. Um, the guy who invented those never got set for me. <laughs> <laughs> if he had only gotten a royalty deal, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would have signed up for a tenth of a cent for each one of those things. <laughs> um, and then outside of work, I um, do some. I run with this uh, wacky group, Tasting Menu, and I'm sure you know. You probably interviewed Hello Cooper oh, yeah. before, yeah. but I'm there. Um, I don't think our film has actually made it to Hello. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> i, I got to get back and uh, interview him about okay. the Max product. <laughs> I know he was on the Net Show, so yeah. sometimes yeah. I get you guys mixed up. No, he has a great food blog. And yeah, so we're a part of, the, we, there's like five, six people in that group, and we make cookbooks, like online cookbooks. It's just because we're 
we love food and Hillel's pretty crazy and he loves like instant like documentation and he's really great at it and uh, take Paymon Orizi takes these beautiful photographs and then I design an online book um, using that content. It's pretty fun. So I'm even doing design outside of work. Which is yeah. <laughs> kind of crazy. Yeah. I blog at three in the morning too. <laughs> Do weird things. What else should we know about your job? I mean, I, um, or about what's going to be appearing on screen? I mean, I, 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 I know all the Neo Win guys are going. Oh, can we yeah. get the latest screenshot? <laughs> yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> it's it's hard because we really want to share a lot of this stuff, yeah. but it's um, we can't because yeah. you know, we, if we do, then we lose all of our rights to it, and someone can copy it, and uh, and then. Um, then some, you know, then you end up getting two products that are really similar and you're, you confuse the user about which is which. And so it's a tricky balance. We always have to fight. Um, yeah. we, want, we de definitely want to share our, our, our work. We work so hard <laughs> for it. But, um, do, you, do you go in the user testing sessions and watch how users are actually? Oh, yeah. What do you learn from that? Well, I mean, a lot of it is just being there and, like, it's kind of a humbling experience and seeing people struggle, <laughs> you know, or get really offended by something that you designed. It, it it's about um, I think that immediate um, sort of feeling of responsibility. <laughs> yeah. And so um, Joey went, and I went out on the road and we went to um, Phoenix, L.A., Phoenix, and Atlanta, and did some interviews on the UI and as it's an interesting experience. People can are so articulate about um, certain things and not so articulate about others. I mean, it's such, such a sort of fuzzy space. Yeah. So um, the amazing thing was that we learned this past trip was that we tested some sounds, some startup sounds, and uh, and people were amazingly articulate about sounds, about music, than they were about visuals. Interesting. Yeah, so that like, with, when they looked at a visual, they were like, yeah, that's cool. You know, like, well, why is it cool? And it was hard for them to get it out of them. Cause I, and I think it has to do with, like, looking at an operating system, which you don't really see as a designed thing. Yeah. Um, but music, they, like, they grooved on that. I mean, they just were able to talk, talk, talk about it. Well, I think you just nailed it when you said grooved. You know, <laughs> we, we have a whole language about music and sound. Yes. You know, yeah. and... We don't really have a common language for visual, you know, for visual experience. How, you know, like if you see an iPod, it makes you feel something, and, right. and you don't have a good way to express why it makes you feel that way, or you know, the way you do on music. Right, know? right, and I think music has a um, immediate emotional response um, that is different from visuals. It's uh, and people can talk about melody and beat. Yeah. and rhythm. Like, it's the language thing. Yeah. yeah. What do you hope developers who build on Windows Vista, especially for Windows Vista, what do you hope that, how do you hope they step up their game to, to oh play, God. to riff on, <laughs> on the work you've yeah, done? Yeah, no, we, that, that is our dream is that, I mean, this is sort of the reason why we even raised the bar on visuals was to, to get applications that run on Vista to, um, to totally shine and for them to differentiate. I mean, that's sort of our competitive edge too. Is that you can you can run on top of Windows and be your own distinctive experience. And so, borrowing from some of the foundational elements like Explorer and Dialogues and um, Wizards and things like that, I and mean, just the common elements and the common controls, like building your own distinctness on top of that. Yeah. That's that's what we hope for. Okay. Any uh, other things that we should know about your job? Any misconceptions that people might have? Like, oh, you're just an artist. And, you know, <laughs> or, well, we're not. Or your job's easy. <laughs> all you do is play in Photoshop all day. That's easy. I mean, I play in Photoshop. You know, it's fun. <laughs> I think at Microsoft, it's it's been um, a really interesting past five years, like for designers because we were seen as pure UI people that we just designed widgets and we still do that I mean that's still true <laughs> but we also uh, stepped up the game and helped 
lead, you know, the vision um, about experience. So it's not just about widgets, but it's about the flow of interaction, and it's about the bigger picture, and it's about the brand. I mean, it's about all these things, and um, and I and it's sort of design-driven engineering in a way. Not to offend the developers, but um, we we're sort of partners now, and I think um, that's that's changed a lot. And um, how has Microsoft changed? How long have you been at Microsoft? Uh, it'll be oh my gosh, it'll be four years in February. That's all. You've had a huge impact in four years. So, um, <laughs> Thanks. How has it changed? Well, you've talked about how it's changed in four years. Um, do, 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 do. What, what, what do you want to do that you're not able to do in Vista? Oh, let's see. Have you started thinking about what you're going to do for a... Uh, I don't know. What, are they still calling it Black Cone, the version of Windows? Oh, after I think we're calling it Vista Plus One. I don't, Windows that's, Vista. That's what I've heard people talk about it. Um, Have you started thinking? Oh, I, I want to do that. I kind of well, we the designers and I like. Well, there's several of us who think this. We want little toys, not just the the gadgets. We want little toys on the desktop, <laughs> where you know you've got. I've got like t you know things that you fool around with on your physical desktop, but just little senseless toys on the desktop would be kind of fun. Um, hey, my dad bought a four thousand dollar PC just to play solitaire, so. <laughs> 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 which drove me nuts. He was like, uh, you know, he had a top of the line video card, and this was five years ago, and he'd play solitaire. <laughs> it's like, Dad, you can play Doom or <laughs> yeah, or Flight Simulator. Well, or, we, you know. we did redesign solitaire. <laughs> so yep. some of the visuals around that. Yeah. Um, gosh, there are a lot of little things. I mean... Why is having I, a brand so important? Why, what is it about knowing that it's, you know, an Apple computer you're sitting at or a Microsoft well, Windows computer? otherwise you become like flour or sugar, you know? It's all based on price then. If there's no emotional connection or, you know, need for a desiring an iPod versus a Rio, you know, then, then it just becomes... Um, Competitive because of price, and um, so brand goes way deeper than just the icon you like use, the logo, or the yeah. logo, or yeah. it's the product design itself and how it makes you feel when you use it and show it to other people. Absolutely, right? it's a perception. And the funny thing is, is that we don't own the brand. Like we don't own the Windows brand. Like our users own it. They, they develop the perception around the brand, and we can help influence it by building really great products and. Having and you know having visual cues and building this language around it, like Target has with their bullseye logo and yep. their red and white ads. I almost wore my Target shirt today. <laughs> oh, you have a Target shirt? <laughs> yeah, I spoke to them. And, oh, cool! Uh, they gave me a shirt. I yeah. love that brand. Yeah. Anyway, so um, you know, they they the the end user is the ultimate person who owns our brand, and we can just influence them with the products we build and the service we give them. Well, thanks for spending a little bit of time with sure. us. Sure.